Hi, my name is Roy Yamane. I am uh, one of the founders of the American Billiard Academy. Uh, I happen to be mindful in my younger days, like some of you, and started to learn. And I'll tell you what happened, why I took it into heart. Because when I was young, starting off, when I was 18, I started to play. And I know my younger brother was playing, and he actually. Uh, was going down to the pool room with his buddies and, and his older friend, his, his friend, uh, brother. So he was getting practice every day. One day we, he took, asked me to take him down to the pool room. Boy, he beat the pants off me. So I figured, I figured that uh, you know it's no time for me to learn. So I started playing, and I loved it so much. I think the furthest I've ever gotten away from it, from the game of pool, on getting on the table, was probably was one week. Longest period of time I've ever gotten away from the game. Now, I've probably played the pool longer than some of you, oh, most of you are, but so yeah. uh, of the age that I've played for in that duration. I've played for 44 years. So how, many, how many of you are younger than 44 years? Everybody, right? <laughs> right? Anyhow, uh, I uh, have been writing for various magazines. Here's one of them I left. Uh, I'm going to leave uh, quite a few copies. If they run out, I've got more. It is a very good uh, thing to look at, uh, see where you're at in terms of what's happening around the neighborhood and internationally. Uh, one of the things that happened is that uh, I write, I've written for about five different magazines and newspapers, uh, uh, actually seven altogether, uh, two of them internationally. One's for Japan, Japan and one's for Canada. So basically, uh, you, you can pick up these. I will be writing again. Uh, they come out monthly. If you can't find them, you'll find them through uh, various billiard rooms and so forth. Also, this weekend, this week, I came from the Women's Pro Billiard Group. How many watch uh, ESPN? Uh, oh, all right. We got some pool players here. Anyhow, this week, uh, as of last night, they had a um, tournament match, a uh, charity event that I, I played in uh, with the pros. And uh, this is this is uh, one of their uh, books. So if you want to browse through this, this is my copy. So if you would, uh, you know, the program, you can see who, who the pros are and, and gives a little history about their background. Uh, most of you probably know Ellison Fisher, uh, especially most, most everybody knows uh, Jeanette Lee, who is one of the Black Widow. Black Widow. So she's in here too. So I'm going to leave this with, with you people here, uh, right over here, if you want to borrow it. Um, take a look at it. Find out what's happening locally. There's tournaments in here that are happening locally. Good thing to do is that, well, I don't play pool. I don't, I'm afraid to get up there and show my ignorance. Well, actually, guess where I start? The same thing. My, my kid brother beat the pants off me, right? So I, I had to get get up there and start learning. So, you know, it's, you've got to start someplace if you want to get better. Um, I'm coaching three of the pros right now. I've taught probably over a half a dozen pros already in my uh, state. So, I want you to understand one thing. Today, I, 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 was, I had the pleasure of coming to see you people, and uh, it was really uh, an honor to even do this for you. And I'm glad that there's a whole entourage of people that want to see what I'm going to do. Well, one of my trick shots uh, I'm going to do is to be able to see that when I was doing the uh, preparation of the pool, pool ball, setting them up, and so forth, uh, it did, I didn't know how many people were going to be in here, but I assumed that every time I have to come in here, let's see, who plays golf, by the way? Anybody play golf? Or played golf before? Sure. <laughs> All right. Golf but is soccer. You, you've actually tried to play. If you ever went on the golf course and played and went on the putting green on a very wet morning, or let's say everyone's played baseball, right? And if you were to hit a ball, a baseball bat on a wet field, how far does a ball roll after it hits the grass one time? Not very far. But on a dry occasion, it keeps rolling, doesn't it? A lot further than it would if it was wet. This is the same thing here, so you got to understand. Uh, this is my turf. 
right here, the Phillips. So understand one thing, if it's crowded and a big party, you're gonna find that this slows down. These are just incre increment little elements of putting something in your mind to be able to let you understand. Today I'm going to teach you quite a bit on how to control that cue ball. Today you would see a few trick shots that are amazing and sometimes I'll flub it up, but it's okay. Just to be able to see that what happens, I'm going to show you a couple things here. I'm going to shoot this shot, one of the most beautiful shots that I've, I've ever experienced. You see six balls out there with, with one cue ball. Of course, you, all you people normally shoot with a clear ball. The pros are starting to use this because you can see the spin of the ball, how it spins, how it basically uh, stops, or if, if it runs and it starts to, you know, put juice on the cue ball. And I can make that do it so that you can kind of see where it's going, okay? Now, on this particular shot, I'm going to make one ball in every pop on one shot. What? If I make five, I'll be happy, okay? So. <laughs> But anyhow, the blue one will go here, the maroon will go there, the orange one will go there, the purple one will go here, the yellow one goes here, and the red one goes here. Okay. All right, here we go. 100 bucks, you're missing. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Mr. Miyagi, and I said, wait a minute, no, just call me the sensei, and it has stuck with me ever since. <laughs> they call me the sensei. Anyhow, uh, some of the shots you've probably seen, and I will do a few more here, and uh, see how well I do. But, you gotta understand one thing, like I say, the turf is wet, so some of them will go, most, most of them should go. Let's see how well it does. Now I'm going to make, make the maroon one over here, the green one here, and the yellow one and the orange one. We'll have a race to see where, you, see which one goes first. So, all right, here we go. Oops. Wait one more time. <laughs> <laughs> In baseball, they said they give you three strikes and you're out, right? So we'll, we'll see what happens here. I should be able to make this one. And a lot of the times that you, you'll be able to see, if they're set up properly, they, they will go, but boy, there, there's a lot of times that they need to be um, readjusted because, of, like I say, if it's wetter or drier, it makes a difference. Shot a shot for a Miller Lite commercial. 
anyone familiar with that shot or seen it on TV? This is years ago. Uh, he did this and made him very famous. But the shot was set up where he would set the shot up like this. And once he set it up, he commented on, on a couple things. Uh, what he did was that he took a bottle of Miller Lite, placed it on the middle of the table. I'm not going to do that, but uh, <laughs> I don't want it open. The re he actually took, for that commercial, he took 186 attempts, takes, on the movie because he either flubbed up the comment or didn't make the shot or did something wrong. You know? and three times they had to recover the table because he went like this and spilt the beer on the table. And then, so they had to recover it three times. So besides that, so 186 attempts. Well, I know you don't, you don't want to be here all night. So we're going to see what we can do. I'm going to shoot this nine ball. It's going to carry him off the 12. 12 goes here. Nine ball goes in the side. And also the orange one goes here. This blue one hit the red one in here. The blue one will go over here, OK? And hopefully we can get this, and I'll be able to remove this bottle before I get to the eight. Whoops. Oh, oh. one more time. Let's see if I can do that. Okay. Now, we, we don't want to be here all day for 186 times. <laughs>
Yeah. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Oh God, it's probably the noise You know, if you, get one, if you get by one of these over the billard room, you can do this trick shot. <laughs> All you have to do is to make sure that the bottom is, has a weight and as it goes by the side of the pocket, see? <laughs> so you can do that, pull that, and then uh, pull your other eight ball out. Tell your buddies, okay, I'll do that. Do it with that, and see what happens. Don't go like this. <laughs> so, so, pass that around. <laughs> All the way around. Just see what, how heavy that is in comparison to this other ball here. Here. The difference between the weights. Okay, at least now you, you know how to do one shot. Okay. Um, okay, here's here's a beautiful shot too. It's knowing that uh, some of the shots happen. Got the stripes, okay? So you're trying to figure out what, what to do, and you've got all these balls here. Well, you want to make one shot and get position for the eight ball, so you, this is what happens. Oh, well, wait a minute, one more time. Hold on. But I do have position for the next ball. <laughs> Either and get stuck in the middle, so 
I'm going to jump out of there myself, okay? So let's, let's see what happens here. I got out of there, but I want somebody to come up here. Would you mind come up? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> now the nine ball is in the middle of the pack. I want you to see if you can slide that cue ball right by the five or the two without touching. Without touching. Why just, you with the just move it by there. Go ahead and see if you can no get way. it. No way? No. Push it through there. They both move, right? Yeah. Okay. No. Try it with between here. Yeah, no way. I can see from here. It's gonna Okay. <laughs> you can see what happens. Now I'll tell you what, what happens on this shot. You jump let, me twice. Show, let me show you what happens. Just to make you aware. Okay. I'm going to put these coins here. So that normally if I roll over the coin. If I roll over the coin like this, oops, right. I'll do what I was supposed to do. Okay. If I roll over the coin, it jumps. Now understand that uh, this has to jump over the ball, this ball has to jump over the other ones. So that's what happens to the ball. Besides that, when you're shooting shots and you actually hit it like as hard as this and miss the ball, guess where it goes? Anywhere on the table. You can't judge where the cue ball is going to go. But if you still had the same shot and you were to miss it, let's say it hung up here somewhere, at least you blocked the pocket. So now your opponent might have a ball here. Now he can't use that pocket. So. Try to move it, the ball, object balls are on to where you can barely make it next time. If you miss it, don't worry about it. You already got the hole blocked out, right? You locked it up for yourself. Okay, um, today I'll be teaching quite a few people that want to learn. And I want to show you a couple things with it. Uh, we can do. Of course, you people don't know what this is, right? <laughs> <laughs> as much as you do on the computers, I don't think you, you really need this anyway. But uh, I use a, these are my what they call uh, uh, reinforcement labels. These are my pool reinforcements. What it is, is be able to see that uh, objectively, I will take and set up a shot here like this. To make you understand what is going to happen is that if I have an object ball here, 
here here or here this is going to be another solve or here all right I'm trying to I'm going to try to get position position means I'm trying to make it so that I can get to making my object ball and placing the cue ball where I like to get for my next shot. Okay? So <coughs> I'm going to use a business card to show you where I would like to have a cue ball stop in the vicinity. In my mind, I set myself up. While I'm playing the game, I, can't, I won't be throwing business cards out there to uh, put where, where the cue ball should go. But I will generally, uh, you know, put in my mind, I'd like to put it here. Okay? It's just like you punching the A on the, uh, uh, capital A on the computer. You, you want to make sure you get it right so you put the cap, you know, shift it and so forth, right? Okay. So I want to be able to come here for the six ball. So I would have position for this. All right, so I will hit it just like that. Get there, okay? That's close enough. Now I'm not changing the spots on this like a tiger, tiger or I mean leopard spot, but I'm changing the things I do with the cue ball. Okay, so I already got this this ball. All right, the next I'm going to come over here. So. I need to be somewhere in here. So now I hit it up high. Before I shot for the six ball, I hit, hit it fairly low and soft. Now I have to hit it higher. You will see that I can come there too. Okay. You want to play again, <laughs> okay. Now I want to get over here for the two ball. Same shot. I haven't changed anything, right? I'm going to come over here, this way. A little bit, a little bit hard, I think. Of course, nobody ever, nobody scratches, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you see the generality of where that cue ball is going to. Let's see how well I can do it this time. I'm going to change it up this time. I'm going to. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> Uh-oh. Don't talk while you're trying to play pool. I think that's a little better. Are you also playing English? Yes, yeah, so I'm applying English. I'm hitting top or bottom uh, to make the cue ball control itself a little better. This time I'm right the two balls out of there. But now I have to come over here for the five. So this time I'm going to power it up come across this way. Would you be satisfied with that one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, at least you can make the five. All right, so my last one, this one here. Okay, I'm going to try to come over here. Actually, it'll be about right about here. If you judge that, we're playing on this table. Whoops, whoop, whoop. Uh, didn't quite work out. Okay, here we go. Now, if I wanted to get over here, this is how I could do it. All right. Now, basically, I have to come over here, right? Watch what I do with the cue ball this time. Oops. That was just a hair off. I caught right here. If I can catch on the back side of this. Chalk is very important also. So you have to compensate where you're hitting the red ball. Yes. You don't have to. So you know there's a, there's no place on the pool table that I can't get. Is that right? Now let's let's see you try. 
<laughs> okay. Now, um, basically, it takes years of practice, and this is not an easy game. So don't think, don't take it in, in your mind that it is. You know, you've got to understand. Am I, am I going to make the ball to uh, make it to run the table? Am I going to position my cue ball wherever you want? Uh, there are things that you can do. If you have a ball here, if you have a ball here, if you have a ball back here, and you you happen to be here. Well, the main thing, what I'm going to show you is that I'm not going to change the shots again to make you understand what is happening with the cue ball. And I'm going to shoot this shot. And let's assume that I have this ball here. If I stop it, let's say I have a ball here. If I stop the cue ball, that means I hit it low, watch the spin on the cue ball. It's going to backspin up until it hits the ball, and it won't have any back forward spin or backspin by the time it hits. It'll, it'll just basically stop. <laughs> okay? All right, now, assuming that I didn't have that shot, same shot again. I'm trying to make it go forward. Because if I stop it, I'd have a very difficult shot. But if I roll it up here, now, remember the last shot, I shot it soft down here. Now I'm going to come up higher, watch what happens to the cue ball now. Ah, run a little bit. Hit it up high when you want to go forward, right? Okay, got that one out of the way. Now, get too forward to pop back out on you. Now I have a ball back here. So what do I do to make that ball come back? I hit it very low. But the first one I had over here, I hit it soft. Now I have to use a lot more energy because I want the back spin more by the time it hits the ball. So I have to use a little more energy for this shot to hit it very low. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere I can get to it, I can get to it. If it's, you know, basically a general shot. Now, if I, if I had a shot like this, I'd say that's very difficult to do. But, you know, knowing the table a little bit, not well enough, but being able to see that I don't have a shot at this ball, I'm going to make it over there, okay? How am I going to do that? Okay, let's see how well I do. It'll come close. Oops, wait a minute, one more time. That's a tough reach shot. So, let's get back here. Oh, I'm not understanding the rails. One more time. Three strikes, right? <laughs> okay. No. Four strikes. <laughs> no, I got four strikes with it. <laughs> yeah, it should, it should be fairly close with it. No, these, these rails are not reacting. Uh, okay, let's try it over here. Oh. Well, I'm not making myself look good here after all the other shots, right? No, I have the same problem. <laughs> <laughs> But understanding a little bit about the table, we'll see if I can do this. Just make sure that it's possible. Better do a five. Here's a shot that I'm going to hit one, two, three, four, five. Hopefully we'll make a home run. Well, she actually 
had a husband that just passed away, and so she was she wanted to get some entertainment. So she went down to the senior center, and at the senior center they had a couple pool tables there. And they, said, they were having so much fun. She had to sit there and watch. She never picked up a stick, but she called me one day and says, "Can you teach me how to play pool?" Yes, I can. Uh, I guarantee it to. Uh, yeah, I guarantee it to make you shoot better. So she said, "Well, you know, I am 71 years old. Is there any problem with that?" I says, "Can you see the balls?" <laughs> <laughs> That's all I needed to know. She says, "Yes." Okay. Well, I said, "Come on down, and we'll we'll try." She took five lessons with me. And she just called me up about six months after that. After the five lessons, and said. Brought to you tears from my eyes. She says, you know, thank you very much for teaching me. I have learned quite a bit, and I can see what I'm doing with my game. It's really improved. So, understanding that, it really helps. So, if you haven't played, picked up a stick before, come on up. Grab a stick, and we'll show you how the game is played. And the rest of you that knows how to play, be able to pick up a few tips from what I'm going to show you here. Okay. So, anyone that would like, come on up. If you're new to the game, or if you want, to, you know, you're an intermediate player, or beginner, come on up. All right, come on. Oh, oh well, that's a good ball. We finally got a ball. Okay. 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 We, uh, you dry. <laughs> yeah, you can buy those over at the, uh, you know, over at the village. Okay. 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 We're not going to even shoot a ball yet. To make you make you understand what we're doing with the you. Be able to see that first of all. Uh, let's see. We need chalk. Yeah. What's the chalk? Chalk is used for one purpose and one purpose only. Uh, basically, to see that when you chalk up your cube. You're trying to make sure the whole tip is properly. The reason for the chalk, if you don't have a chalk on the tip, what it does is that actually it will slide off the cue ball and it will miss cue. And when you miss cue, this is what happens a lot of times. You're either hitting too low, you've done that before. Nobody's done that before. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, yeah. uh, that will help you and prevent you from actually this cube more so. Okay. Um, what I would like to show you is that uh, when you're, okay, first of all, we're going to go with what they call a grip. Everyone stand back behind the uh, table, grab the cube where they think that they should pull it right about six, six to twelve inches from the butt end of the cube. Okay? Most of the tall people should grab it towards the back end. A cube length should be Tighter your chin. So most of your that one there is really too short. That's a little short for you. It's okay. This close is okay. No, so that's too long. It's okay. No, no, no. That's fine. Okay. But uh, if you have longer cue or the same size cue, you two should probably grab it more so back here. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that's a longer cue than most averages, anyways. But it's okay. That that that'll work. Like where you should grip. Shorter person should be right about in the 12 inch frame. But it should be pretty close to uh, where it's comfortable. And so if you lay the tip of your cue down here, and stand perpendicular to the, not like this or this way, just stand toward facing the table, lay the stick down, and then lay the cue stick right by your, your side of your hips or your legs. And uh, basically, if you're holding it just barely enough to hang on to it there, now basically that's all you need is that grip. Now just think that you're holding the egg or you're holding the chicken by the neck. You don't want to squeeze and choke the chicken, right? Okay. All right. So basically, this is this is what you grip is very important. 
in baseball, you know, they have a nub on the end, and uh, so you can grip the. If you find your uh, batters in, in pro, you see sometimes a bat flies out of their hand because they're holding so loose. Why do they hold it loose? They're trying to make the bat do the work for them. That's how they get into home run. You ever try to play baseball when you're younger and there's credit? To it? <coughs> and how far does that go? And one day you get up there and just so I'm just hit this bam. Wow. Because you're relaxed. That goes the same for the grip. Some of you actually get down on a shot and go like this. That's too much muscle. You don't raise it. You don't take the golf ball and go this way. I mean, you do, that's not what you do. You actually take a swing. Take a bat. Swing. And you don't. A lot of you are shooting like this. Well, you don't take a bat and go. Alright? So follow through is very important. Okay. So what you do is you lay the stick there. Now, okay, stand parallel to it. Now step forward and put your hand here. With your proper feet. Okay. Now, now bend down. Okay. Now feel that your arm is taking the cue, and that's how loose you, your grip should be. You shouldn't be shooting it so you lift up your feet. Okay, so once you put your bridge here, that's the way you should throw. Okay. Okay. Some of you are using what they call the whole arm stroke, which accumulates straight. Some of you are using a pendulum stroke like this, so that when you actually shoot, your tip goes downward because I'm not moving my elbow. But some of you drop your elbow so that the cue goes straight. Uh, the proper way, the easiest way, is one set of muscles, biceps and triceps. When you start to do this and level up the cue, you're using biceps, triceps, shoulder muscles. You know, I taught my uh, my well, my wife how to play darts. One time I tried to teach her, but she couldn't play. Uh, she was playing almost three times a week. I played maybe uh, once a week or maybe once a month. One time she came up to me and said, "Well, wanted." She wanted to play, and uh, she thought she could beat me. Well, when I was taught by uh, taught by one of the number two international champions, uh, dart player, he told me, you know, these kids like this. You go to the dartboard, put your elbow on the table, and start to throw like this. How many muscles does it take? Five, six, thirty seconds. Okay, so I'm actually throwing like this. Every time I get up there, you get on the table, you do. This way the rest. Now, it, when I was playing her match with her, she could never beat me. Okay, because in fact, uh, this is how this is how I throw darts. This is how she throws darts. <laughs> how many muscles does that take? No, you're trying to use less amount of muscle. So just use your elbow. Freeze the rest of your body up. So when you're going like this, that's why you can't hit it straight every time. That's why it doesn't do what you want it to do. Sometimes it does well, sometimes it doesn't. Because of the fact that you can move your body. In tennis, you don't move the body. Once you hit your stance, you come into it. Baseball, same difference. You might, in golf, you have a swing, but you keep your head straight, right? You can see the ball a little closer. A little bit of differences in sports, but uh, they're basically the same thing. All right. Now let me show you something else about the grip and the grip. Now come up here, put it about halfway up the table here, as far up here. Okay, that's good. All right, yours, yours is fine too. All right, now step up to the table. Now some of you are facing this way. Some of you like to face this way at a 45. That means your foot is parallel or at a 45 stance. That means. This angle here, the toe to toe, should be at 45. Uh, men should be standing at a 45 degree. Women at perpendicular. Let me explain why. Men walk with their arms inward. That's their natural tendency to come into this angle. So what? What about if I'm swinging like this? 
That means I, if I turn enough that this is my natural swing, that's the direction my feet should be. Okay, so that's so my feet are toe to toe. It'll be like this. Now, women, and besides that, men are made, made like apes. Their arms are outwards. Okay, their ancestry. That's where it comes from. Now the women have a different uh, different uh, construction than men, men do. You know that one of the situations is their arms are out. If you stand loose, their elbows are in further than they are bent. So which way does the arm move? This way. Okay, when they walk. Besides that, they have other other inferior elements in their way. I won't say what they are. <laughs> but the main thing is to be able to see that if the women stand perpendicular, the men stand this way. So that's your stance. And the width of your feet should be further the taller you are, the more wider you should go. Because if you watch the cue stick, as I put my feet wider, the cue stick will drop down in elevation. That's what my torso does. Watch what the cue stick does as I spread my feet. See how the cue stick drops? So I don't stand this wide, but basically it's about a shoulder and a half width. So for you taller fellows, maybe shoulder and a half width, and then you want to position your body to come down a little bit, so you actually bend your knees. Okay. Now, the other thing is, is that when you actually come in, is this what you want to learn, everybody? Okay. These are the basics. I have pros that come in to actually get taught by me, to show them what they're doing wrong with it. If you take them, they actually find out what they do. And they say, oh my god, I didn't think I was doing that. But I myself take myself every three to six months to see if my mechanics are perfect. Of course, they never are. That's why I have to take myself every three months. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, everyone falls into their own habits, back in their own habits, even if I try to change them. So here, here's what we're going to do. Set up the cube in the middle of the table. Right, you can pull your back foot. Okay, right, and you're standing adjacent to it. Now, to come up to the table with your hands, put it about six to nine inches away from the very tip of the cube. Okay, if you're way back here, some of you need to move up. Now, that doesn't mean reach out further. That means to move your whole system up. So you're like, this is what I'm doing. I'm grabbing here, but then I'm moving the whole system up. I feel like a shorter bridge or a longer bridge. Okay. That doesn't mean do this, shorter bridge or a longer bridge. That's not what you're trying to do, shorter bridge or longer. That's not what you're trying to do. You're trying to be in a comfortable position. That means, first of all, when you're gripping your cue at a certain six to nine inches, that means this arm should not be forward or backwards. It should be perpendicular to the cue. This is where you have the most freedom in your wrist. Okay? It's like when you're hitting a, a ball with a bat. You can't hit the ball here. You can't hit it back here. Where is it? Right in front of it. This is where you have the most wrist action. Where do they hit the tennis, tennis ball? Same thing right here. Where do they hit the golf ball? Because this arm is here. This is where they have the most wrist action. Same with pool. What you make there? Perpendicular. Okay? Now, the other element is. All that is there, if you're going to use a short, then you bring your grip up for the short bridge, longer bridge. Okay. And uh, pull is like golf. If you have a ball here near the hole, all you have to do is cut it in the hole. If you want to drive, you can't do it from here and forth like this. Right? So basically, the more power that you're going to use, grip it back further and grip this back further. So you have freedom of movement. If you have a short shot like this, and you, all you're trying to do is just stop it. Well, all you need is a short bridge. Just do that. So you don't have to have a long stroke. But a long stro stroke that I had here to bring the cue ball for this other object ball when I was here, I brought it back all the way back to here. I had to get a very long stroke. Some of you might have picked that up. Okay. The other element is a ball yet. Okay. Uh, 
So how do we create a bridge? Okay, everyone put their cue stick right in the middle of the table. Put your hand on, on the table, walk up to it, step up, make sure your feet is, uh, okay, you women probably stand this way. Okay, try that. This way. Does it, does it feel uncomfortable? It feels weird, yeah. yeah okay, well, actually, that is better, but if you feel uncomfortable with it, go ahead and change your position. Okay, I'll try it. That's okay, that's all right, if you want to do that, that's okay. Now, once you get your cue stick right in the middle of the table, your bridge, uh, you want to put your palm down. I'm going to show you an open bridge first, so lay your palm straight. <coughs> now, all you want to do with that is be able to see that you cup up, bring your knuckles up, and keep your fingers straight. Cup up like this. There you go. Now, there you go. Okay. Keep your finger not bent like this, but try to keep it straight. That gives you a rigidity. The palm should be always down on the table. Okay. And then now you use your thumb and lift up your thumb next to your index finger. There you go. Now put your cue on top of that. That feel comfortable? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's stable. A lot of times I'll put pressure on my hand down on the table, especially when I'm using more energy on the shot. And you can see the cue's not coming off the off my bridge, even if I'm stroking. Now your thumb is out here, that's why it's moving. Okay, move your thumb, move your thumb. There you go. Now, now see, it doesn't move now, right? So that's more stable. So, okay. That's good, everybody. Okay. Now, grip is loose back here. And uh, what you're going to also do is be able to see that when you shoot your, your shots, you don't get up here and then, like, here's your ball. You don't get up here and then first, first shot you get, it's go wham. Tiger Woods actually did a shot on TV that was impossible, but he did it. He, he did it on a riverbed that was going down. At the bottom of the riverbed was about one foot above the uh, water. He had a ball here, and he had to go across this way. And he went, he, he stroked at it 10 times before he even hit the ball. Just to feel how the grass, the blade is cut with the uh, club, how it goes to the grass, plus that, uh, how he's able to hit the ball, whether he was able to or not, and so forth. So what you should do when you're coming up to the ball, you don't get up here and shoot at it. If you have a power shot, come over here and get a feel for it. it you know, think about your shot while you're actually coming over here to the side get a free stroke at it. So you're taking a pre-swing, pre pre-stroke. So it's good that I do that, especially on hard to reach shots. You know how many times have you done that? The old cue didn't go straight, so I don't have miss cue. Right? Uh, I've seen a lot of smiles. You, you've never done that before, huh? Never. Okay, right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, you know, I, basically what you're trying to do is be able to see that you're sort of one, two, three. And a lot of you will stop and think about the game first and go one, two, three. So you follow through with your stroke. Okay. Your stance, like I say, think about being shoulder and a half to shoulder width. Taller fellows, maybe shoulder and a half plus. Bend your knees if you want to. Taller women also. I'm just talking to the men, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Now, once you get down, you want to just to see how it goes, how it goes straight. Some of the things you can do is, uh, you know, you can take these plastic bottles, empty the water out of them. And you sit on the table and open up the hole, okay? And just practice through the hole. One, two, three. See if you can touch the back before you hit the edge of the lip. If you hit the edge, the bottle keeps skidding off the table here. So, you know, you want to set up a bottle that is empty and dry, of course. You don't wet the tips. So that'll be a good practice stroke for you to be able to shoot straight in, or straight up if you will. The other is using the side rail here. If you were to uh, use a side row, you put your cue so you see the gray and the wood. And, and then be able to see that you pick up the bridge, pick up with the bridge here, and then stroke out through and be able to see that the cue goes straight. Some of you have your arms out like this. What happens if the cue goes like this? Okay. Some of you have it in. If you go in, it goes this way. 
So that means that your arm should be, when you're looking back at back here, it should be perpendicular. Or per the perfect vertical, not wing like a chicken or in. Should be perfect vertical. Okay? And that doesn't mean that your muscles should be like this or this way. When you stroke, you don't do this or you don't do this. The main thing is to keep a loose wrist. What it does is come straight at you. So if you actually does it straight. Okay? Alright? Okay. Now, uh, let's try something. Another good practice you can do is take the strike ball. And I'm assuming that uh, it's lined up here. You can take that right on the E here. Put it right up on top there. Put the strike here. And we're going to shoot straight at the middle of this chalk up here. And if you hit it perfect, you're going to see that you want to hit it above the equator middle. That means hitting it above the equator middle means hitting the ball just above center. Here's center, but you want to hit it just above center, like about here. Okay. All right, so put the ball up here. See how well I do. It's a good test. I still do this after 40, 40 some odd years of play, so and I still can't get it right. So you expect there's a lot. Everyone else do it better than I can. <laughs> okay. I'm aiming at center of the job. I'm aiming above center. Wow. Okay, next. I quit. <laughs> All right. You see that if you were to waver it, if you set it upright and it's perfectly upright, what happens, and if I were to aim offset to one side, watch what happens now. I'm not going to aim this over here, but I'm going to offset it to the left. Watch what happens to the strike on the ball. It goes straight, but guess where the ball goes? It spins and hits the rail. It goes kind of in a clockwise. When it hits the rail, with the force going this way, of course it's going to jam it this way. Okay. So if you're just a hair off, you'll see. Uh, who would like to try this first? <laughs> Who's going to be the guinea pig? Come on. <laughs> all right. Let's go all the way around. You first. Yeah, you go first. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> okay. All right. You want to hit it above center. Bite you. Right there. Okay, now. I'm right. right. Okay, now. Okay, loosen up. You've got a good loose grip. Okay, now. You're aiming over here, right? So is that going towards the chop? No. Okay, over here. Um, okay. okay, so you move the whole shift over. That doesn't mean move this only this way. You have to move okay. over okay. here. Yeah. Okay. So you put your position. Now, let me see something before you shoot. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I want you to be able to see that. Okay, you're aiming over here. You want to aim over here. You're aiming over here. No, you want to aim over here. So there you go. Now move. Now you're aiming to the left on the middle of the ball. So you know you're aiming over here. You want over this side. No, the butt end of the cube. Move, move. There you go. Right there. Okay. No, more, more. More? more, more. Yeah. This is not a whole bunch. Now let's do it. Okay. This is good. Uh, okay. Right there. Close. You can try it. Oh, you hit the bottom of the ball. That's why. It, that's, that's why I went that way. Huh? Right. So you hit, hit it on the right side. <laughs> when you hit it on the right <laughs> side, <laughs> it goes this way. See? So it, it was pretty close, though. See? It, when I spun it, it went way over here, but yours always went to here. So you're just a hair off. Try it one more time. <laughs> oh, no! What? <laughs> That's a lot better. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Okay.
Okay. Oh, good. You, you just went off just this fast. Okay, that's all right. Okay, next. Okay. <laughs> Missed it. You want to make sure it's straight up and down. Okay, that's good too. If you're about a diamond off, Do you want a stick? <laughs> you know, when it comes back, it, it's okay. It's, it's uh, not perfect, but yet it's uh, reasonably close. So. That was good. Wow. You came right back wow. to you. Wow. wow. <laughs> oh. hey, do I have to follow this? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, just follow yourself. There you go. Okay. Hit it above center. So then just cup up your hand. So yeah, there you go. You move over here. There you go. Now you're adjusting the aim. Okay. You hit on the left side. Yeah, I felt it for children. Okay. That's all good. That's a lot of good. Do that uh, if you like. And uh, if you want, 
some of you to go ahead and play. You can challenge me, that's fine. Or if you want to play teams, I can coach. Would that be better? Yeah. Would that be better? Yeah. Okay. So why don't we get a couple of people that want to play, and then we'll have another group come in, and we, we'll take it, go, go from there. Sounds good? Okay. Who wants to be on the first team? Rob does. Hi. Rob. 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 Okay, what we do is let them get a chance to get played. This gentleman here wanted to. He wanted to. Okay. No, no, the one that I have in college. Oh, okay. Yeah, so let's have her play. Here's one. What's funny is I turned around. Was it you or? Oh, no, it's not. Okay, you went to walk out. Two of you. So generally, you will fall. I don't know what game is, but it's a nine movie. So last five. Two of you. 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 You really see it. Oh, okay. I will view uh, a few things with the game. So <laughs> happy. <laughs> 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 Pretty good. 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 That way you can study it a little bit and other people will learn it all that long. <laughs> 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 By the way, uh, just to give you a little insight on the sticks, this queue here I bought 36, 38 years ago. I don't remember. Yeah. I forgot. So really. Okay. Um, basically, I bought this uh, that long ago, and I actually uh, paid three hundred fifty dollars for it. It's made by Tag Hughes. If you're familiar with uh, Hughes, he is one of the. Uh, he was uh, in the Hall of Fame for. That's mine. And basically, three hundred fifty dollars then. Go out and buy one today for twenty-seven hundred. So you can see that uh, the, you know they appreciate the good cues do. Your cheaper cues, you know, if you're going to get one, get get a nice one. You know, after the first one should always be a very inexpensive one, like about a few hundred dollars. Yeah, there you go. There's the house cue. Oh, that, that one there. You're the two That's my POS cue. All right. So you know. Don't go down to a uh, uh, sports market and get that $20, $20 cube because there's a difference between maple, shavs, and ramen wood. Ramen wood does not have grains like this does. Okay, like all these cues here are uh, uh, maple shavs except for that one. That's my brake cue, but that's really a good one for breaking. It's made out of fiber, fiber coated. And you could hammer it on the table, but don't do it here. <laughs> uh, let me think, let me tell, tell you one more thing about chalk. Chalk is made out of resin and sand. And most of you will find that, uh, like Rob stick, I must, I know, well, actually yours doesn't as much. But you can see it, there's a ring around the collar. That is caused by chalk being used like this and then leaving a mark. See that mark now? I, I put that on there pur purposely so you can see it. Okay. Now resin, resin and uh, sand, silica, will eat up the plastic. And I've seen hourglass ferrules. This is what you call a ferrule. I've seen hourglass shaped like, like hips of the ladies. Okay. Sure. So, you want to be able to see that uh, you actually use this with care. I generally use it to use the edge of the chalk and go along the edge like this. Another thing you don't want to do is to be able to see that you actually take and do this. 
if you were to if you were to lay this chop down on the table this way or sideways, guess what happens? Oh my God! You think that would that would be good on your hands? No. The next time you go over here, take a shot and you put that on the table and you put your hand here. Guess what happens? Oh, geez. Now you put it on here. You know, it's just like riding a bicycle on a concrete surface. Okay. It rides nice and smooth, right? You can go as fast as you can. Put two inches worth of sand on the concrete surface. Now ride your bike. That's what you're doing to your table. It's just like a carpet. You make sure that you don't dirty up the carpet. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the sand gets underneath the cloth, uh, wears faster, and so forth. So, okay. So kind of be cautious about laying the chalk down sideways. Always put it up. Okay. All right. Now let's go play a game here. We're going to use this this other other ball here. So we'll be able to see what's happening with the cue. Yeah. Okay. Now when you wrap the balls, of course you use the wheels on the bottom, right? If you have wheels on the car, you don't drive the car upside down. <laughs> balls and you won't be able to break the balls very well so what you should do is move it up to where you want to set it up but we don't have a spot for it so we will we'll kind of use this as a general eyeball for this line and this line goes straight up and it should be right in the, where this G is to line up with that that's generally real close to it on the very top part of the G so if you go with that and come back to the spot, you see the one ball going fairly close to there should be pretty close. In fact, right up on the edge of the G would probably be ideal. So you actually use this, push the balls up forward, either by using the fingers or the whole palm on all five balls forward, and then you push the rack forward and then lift it up. Uh, then they will see it. Okay. All right, go ahead and start off. Um, no one has picked up the book, so if, if you people would like to look at it, this is the Women's Pro Tour that's happening this week. They are playing over at Bay House Casino, and this is a, one of the programs. These are newspapers that you can see, browse through, check it out. And see. Now I have a glass of wine. Who wants to where do you where do you aim on the break and then okay. we'll have a spin you or okay. you how you actually break. Let me explain about one thing uh, about break. Oh, see where the other two books go. Good. Okay, Newton's law of physics. Of course you don't know law of law of computers, right? Alright. Newton's law of physics. We're going to use that in mid space, there's no gravity. You have two balls equal weight and equal mass. One is stationary, the other one is traveling at 30 miles per hour, dead center to the ball. Guess what happens? This becomes stationary and this one moves at 30 miles per hour. That's what you want to do with the brake. If you were to hit it offset, guess what happens? You hit offset it. This moves at 25 miles and you got five miles of travel with the cue ball. Guess what happens to the five miles with the cue ball as hard as you hit it? Goes around the table a couple times, you all I scratch. <laughs> that, ever, that never happens to anybody else, right? No, no, no. Okay, so wherever you, if you break from the side here, aim dead center to the one ball. So that's where you want to go. If you're breaking from the center, you want to hit dead center to the one ball. If you're breaking from that side, and you were along, you want to hit dead center to it. So you want to hit that ball with full impact. Just disperse all your energy towards the object ball. Did you hit it right in the middle? I hit it square in the middle. Oh, or hit it higher or low? Yeah. I hit it about a half a tip below the center. That means that if I'm aiming at the ball, let's assume that this is a dead center, okay? Equator center. 
I will take and measure the, at the equator, I will take the top of the cube and hit it right there. That gives it enough backspin by the time it hits the ball. It doesn't have a backspin or a forward spin. And you've seen, if you watch the pros, they break that cue ball jump and it lands like that, right on the spot. So it breaks and it jumps up and comes down. Is it better to do straight on or off to the side? No. You aim straight on from here or right, 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 sweep it to aim from the side. Either way, if you aim from the side, you're going to put force on that part, that part of the rack to be able to disperse them uh, out. But there's a good chance for you scratching if you don't hit it dead on. If you go to the left side a little bit from this side, hit it over here, it'll rebound and go in there. Good chance of doing that. Same goes for the other side, it'll rebound and go over here if you hit it on the right side. But if you hit it dead on, you should be able to bring the cue ball right back to here. It's not going to happen every time. So, okay, this is going to take a break. I want to try it because I, I suck at this. <laughs> yeah, at least you want to try it. It'd be good. I want to change that. Okay. Because I'm playing with all these pros. Is your stroke any different on the break? Pardon? Is your stroke any different on the break? Yes, it is. Uh, uh, force. Actually, I, I grab, you know, I use a longer bridge because I'm putting more force into it. And uh, basically, it should be about a 12 inch bridge. That's about like this? a 12 Yeah, that's about right. Just think this is where your bridge should be. Look like you're going to hit on the okay. uh, right. don't, don't tip your head. Okay. Uh, level, level. No. Oh, your eyes are. Your eyes are. This. There you go. Okay. Okay. Now. All right. I aim at the center of the ball. Or the one. Do I want to go through the ball or stop right, right there? Go through the ball. Go through the ball. All right. All right. I'm ready. Then you're going to be good. Good. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Right, she came off the right yeah, side, that's why it's Hey! Suck it. <laughs> I said actually, I suck it. Uh, you, actually, <laughs> okay. Next, who's, who's got the keyboard in hand? Water. Oh, oh, flying off that brick. Okay, well, let her, let her try it again. Yeah, let's try it again. One and up over there. Let's try it again. Have 
that this one told you is wrong. No pressure, Robert. Well, <laughs> enough opportunity to look at all the balls that are possible and what, what ball, balls can go to the offense. So there's another shot that later on you can do. That, no, three balls twice. That's a year you easier one. Shorter the distance of the ball to the pocket, the better off you are. direction of the shot. This is the direction you want to come. So where you have to hit is way over here. Okay. Come over here. Take a look over here. Come on over here and take a look. 
This is where you want to go. Okay. Got a picture of that? Good. 
right? No, no that's actually blocked. It's just a touch of topspin and it'll come right back out between the 15 and the 14. Yeah. Yeah. Middle or high? Huh? Middle or high? Equator middle or higher? Put your finger around it. Yeah. Okay. So this, if you shoot it straight, you want to hit it over here. Right. 
try that with my kids. <laughs> Come on over here and take a look at the 14. 
See, yeah. Yeah. never, uh, always take the time to look at your shot. Well, okay, now if you feel like still this is a shot, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. at least you made a, a deduction in a, a, a mindset where your mind is going to say, okay, I can't do that one as well as you can do this. Okay. Go, go back to your mind. Yeah. 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 And that might change it when you should see the shot. You are right. And it was a uh, high, a very high, a vertically middle. Watch the keyboard come out. Holy crap. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, look at here. Who is this guy? You're hired. <laughs> you, you, you can do my next ex exhibition, bro. Uh, okay. I guess. I mean, it's funny because I guess I want to go right here. Put it forward. Okay. That's a straight-in shot. The only way it goes yeah. straight forward mm -hmm. is that cue ball right. or straight backward. Right. So then I want to try but to. If you want to, you can come here. Yeah. Whereas just a soft shot, mm -hmm. you have a corner shot, or you can come back here and mm -hmm. you have a corner shot there. Which is much more difficult and right. It's so it's better, safer, softer, because if you yeah. hit, miss the ball, it will stay near the pocket. Right. So your opponent, your uh, oncoming player, your partner will have a, a three shot or two shot. Yes. So you don't want to follow it too much, so you're going to scratch. Good, excellent. Nice. Okay. You have the option of shooting either side or the corner. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to shoot the corner. So, you know, this looks like, this is one of those positions that always looks like a scratch shot, no matter which way I go. Okay, right. if you go in the corner, yeah. uh, if you use top, it will go forward. Oh, okay. So you want to hit it in the middle or low? Low will come back this way. Uh, middle of the little near the chalk. Great shot. This is too straight. 
Hit it softly. Well, I'm going to put this other ball here so that you know that I'm, I have to jump this. 
there's no way possible for me to bypass the balls by shooting at level. So I have to move that from here. And I have to hit it hard. You know, see that I have to hit this ball very hard down at the equator level. Okay. Oh, that's small, but you see that the cue ball actually jumps. Okay. So the tip of the cue does not hit the belt? It does not. Whoa! <laughs> no, that's no, this, is the, this is the illegal. I mean, after on the fall, this is the illegal jump. This is right. That, that's that rough, if the tip falls off, guess what happens? The only thing that you're going to have is a barrel that's going to scrape the belt and put a hole in it. That's why uh, all your billiard rooms do, do not allow a jump shot. See that? Unless it's a pro place like uh, De uh, Danny Cave's or Hard Times of Alpha. Or Google. So. <laughs> <laughs> or Google. Or Google. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, actually, this is what you do. See how it jumps? With this heavy cue, it's hard to, uh, I have to put so much force on it. We have a short cue. Oh, here's an 18 ounce. Here's an 18 ounce. Oh, yeah, that, that works better. Even the shorter one is better for jump shots. It's a lot lighter. So if I were to jump the ball, at least don't put the coins up here. What I would suggest is using my hand. Why are the two balls right here? Can you still jump off? Pardon? The two balls are here. The balls are yes. Uh -huh. Again? Yeah, but a good thing to do is be able to see that I'm practicing with a, a dollar, be able to see that, uh, you know, so that you don't defray from the shot. You know that it, it's going to jump. So that it has to jump that much of a ball that I still can't get by that ball. But yet, if I clear it properly, I won't touch the dollar bill. That means that. So you could use that as a reference for uh, you know, doing that, but my recommendation is not to try that unless you're very well uh, A lot of times when I do a jump, jump shot, I don't, I don't attempt on my first shot. I actually get a couple of free practice strokes and then fire the ball. You know, if I'm in a, in a major tournament and trying to make the shot. Okay, uh, we're saying, okay, you're going to do something else. Can you show us a, uh, like a good time to use English? What's that? Okay. A good example of spinning it sideways. Uh, Staying it slightly above or low to the side. Okay. okay. I thought we did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Did you switch the bank shot? We sort of did, but we were close to take one. Let me show you what uh, English oh, is. Uh, first of all, when, when to use position board. Okay, so. I have a ball. What I did was a reinforcement because I had only one directed shot. But here I'm going to show you a couple things about. Uh, let's assume that uh, I have a shot here. About English. If it's straight in. Okay. All I could do is hit it straight at the ball and either stop the cue ball as such, okay. or I want to follow it so I have a ball here. Right. So that means I have the same, same shot, but I follow it so I hit up higher. So now rotation, if you watch the cue ball rotation, I'm going to hit it hard so that you can see the spin of the cue ball. Okay, so you can see, watch what happens to the cue ball. So how oh, fast it goes forward. Now, don't you have to hit it that hard, but if you hit it softer, I'm going to only want to get to there. So all I'm trying to do is hit it high. That's hot, top, top spin. It goes up. Okay. Now, if I have an object ball down here, same shot, and I want to come backwards, I want to be able to see that I, I actually hit it with low here. If I hit it low and hit it soft and low, remember I only stopped it. 
So I have to use more energy to put that ball in the back swing and come back. And then after hitting the ball, once it goes up, it comes back. Okay? So that means if I hit it low, I hit it little, with a little more energy. I don't never scratch either with my hands there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, side spin. That means if I have a shot here, I could do it. side spin. Don't even try. Don't, don't even go there because it's going to throw your shot off. They have uh, variable things that happen. If you try to get over here for a ball, similar to the shot I had before, I want to get over here. Well, the side spin. You see that I will apply left spin on it. So by the time it hits the rail, it comes like this. It goes this way. If I apply right spin on this side, it goes counterclockwise and comes off here and goes this way. I'll, I'll show you, demonstrate both, and I'll use equator middle so that you'll see what happens. I'm going to use equator middle left. And it goes that way. See the spin on that? Same shot. Equator middle. Who said it didn't come? Not chalk. The idea too is so I can't say that I haven't. I still did after 40, 46 years of play. Okay. See where that ball cue ball was? See where my stroke went? Right off the edge. How much down? That how much means, that's how much it I used. Okay. That's how far how far I was to the left. How much do I use? How much how much of that how much do you have to worry about left to right uh, spin on the on the object ball? I mean, how much is that going to impact the path of the path of the cube? No, no, the cube the object ball. The two. It will. Okay, it will affect it. Yeah. Because the more you use, the more deflection gets. It goes. If you use left, it's going to move to the right. If you use right, it's going to move to the left. The cue ball. It's like uh, if I were to push an object right in the middle. It pushes the ball, pushes the thing straight forward. But if I were to use left on the left side, now guess what happens? It moves to the right. And the same thing happens here. If I use shoot it straight, it goes straight. If I go to the left, the ball goes to the right. The, the reasoning, goes to the, right. Pardon? the cue ball goes to the right then. Right. If I use left, the reason is if I forcibly use left, what happens? The energy source is that there's more mass on this side, a little mass on this side. And guess where the center of the ball is, right? The base of the ball. So if you're using left, it's going to really enhance it. Because this, I have at least the whole thing touching the table. But on the ball, it's right in the middle. So what happens is that I use left and move to the right. And I could really prove that to you because I'll tell you what. Uh, let me show you from here. Some people want to come in front of it and back behind me. I'll show you what I'm, I'm trying to prove. Okay. Take a look. Yeah. If you stand right in front of the shot, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. If I aim at it straight at it, I could hit the one ball. But I'm going to move to the left a little bit, okay? And I'm going to aim the cue stick at the one, right? Is that right on the one? Uh, no, it's fine. Okay. Is it right there? Okay, I'm going to hit it hard. What side did I hit? Was I aiming at the one? You see where the cue, cue ball is at? A cue stick is at right now? It's aiming where that one ball was. But it went to the right. So the harder you hit it, the more deflection you have. That's what they call deflection. So you don't want to use side spin unless you know what uh, capabilities that cue ball is going to make. So basically, I use left, it moves this way. Now I'm going to use right, so to move this way. Okay, so I'm going to use right on it this time. See where the cue stick ended up? So basically, I'm aiming here, 
or left, right, or left here. And you have to allow the difference in the angle to allow it to make the ball work. It's too much, you know, past experience to be able to put it all together. So that's pure experience. Pure experience. Plus, your, your subconscious mind that actually helps you. Of all the years you've been missing with the right spin or the left spin, you counterbalance by having your, your uh, actually your mind, subconscious mind, actually help you out. Any other questions? Oh, gee, that's easy. <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> that's like the that's, ball lock, the non ball locked against the rail and you say I think it was somewhere. Okay. You mean wait a minute. Show me an example. Locked against the rail. It's like if the cue ball anywhere and you have an object ball here and you want to send it either there or there. Oh, okay. Alright. Okay. Uh, basically I'm going to show you a kick method first to be able to make you understand. And this will come into, like if I were to show you a shot here, whereas, I'm going to place it up here so I can bridge on the shot easier. If I have a ball here and I have an object ball that's blocking here or here, let's say that if I were to place it here, and uh, the ball is actually in my way so I can't shoot it straight at it, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to hit the rail, either here or down down there. Try and figure out a happy medium. What you understand, what I want you to understand is that this ball is kick, kicking, you're kicking at a ball here. So you've got four diamond distance from here to here. So the happy medium, of course, you don't end up with this kind of shot all the time. You know, if you're trying to hit a ball, it might be here, here, or here, anywhere on the table. I will explain that a little better in detail. For generally speaking, if you find out, okay, I want to kick that ball here, or if I want to bank that ball here into the line with this four diamonds away, then you know, you end up with two diamonds. So that actually that, that would have to uh, be close. Okay, I have to figure out where it is. Okay, here, then it comes short. With, uh, with the uh, weather condition, you got the fog out there. Remember I said moisture, pull the ball down, it grabs also. Drier conditions during the afternoon will make a difference if it comes longer. So if I'm trying to hit it longer because it's shorter, because it's wet out there in the instead of in here, I'm going to have to hit it longer so that it compensates instead of coming shorter to go here. So that means that I have to aim over here. Well, I'm glad that went in. <laughs> uh, one of the things I want you to understand is that if you have a ball here and you have that angle proper, I put it out here in the middle, but it's in line from the four to the two. So if I were to aim at the two, it should be pretty close to making it in. Okay. But, but if I hit it hard, guess what happens? Same at that same diameter. Wow. Came real short. So I still made it, but still, that's not the object. Uh, main thing is to be able to see that you hit a saw. What happens that when you hit a saw and hit it like this at that speed, I, I even went further at the time because of the fact that when you hit a saw, it skips. The cue ball has a tendency to skip. All of a sudden, guess what happens with gravity? Remember earlier I was saying that in mid space you have no, no gravity. But here you have gravity and it's what happens, you have friction. So as it rolls, the skids here all of a sudden gets a natural roll. And guess where that topspin comes into play? Once it hits the rail, as topspin, so guess what happens? It moves forward. That topspin, uh, that's why you aim at the diamond instead of right up here where the diamond is up here. You don't aim at that point. You aim at the diamond. This allocates the more angle you have, it, it, it makes the provision to allow you for the top spin. The more angle, the more further it's going to go up. The less angle, the less it's going to be lower. Okay. 
so being able to see that happens. So this should, you should have a medium stroke, being able to see that fairly close to that. And uh, generally speaking, you'll be very, very true. Uh, if you happen to have an object in your way, and you have to kick at that. Well, you know, if you pass it and hit it hard, it'll come short. So if you pass it, so you even came shorter than that. So you see that at a certain speed, you start to get pinpointed out the speed. That doesn't make it. Okay. Okay, so there's a lot of things involved in physics. All right, here's a good way to really see that. You have a ball here. And of course, you know, you have a ball down here someplace and you're hidden. So how do you figure out where to hit in order to hit that ball? Or hit anywhere near that? You know, if I, let's, let's jump this way. You're over here. Who wants to be the guinea pig to come up here and try it? Okay, grab a cue. Now, understanding a couple things here is that uh, you're going to be on that side. Okay. All right. This is the ball I'm trying to hit. Now, if I had a mirror here, right? Right? It's just like this. If I were to have a ball here, every one of you could see the ball, whether you're straight on or over there, okay, through the mirror. You get to see a reflection over here, right? You see it from this side. You see the lot on ball, right? No matter how far the ball is, you see a reflection. If you were to look at the ball and, and look at this, you'll see that it's a certain distance away from here. And an angle from wherever you're at, whether you're straight on or more angle for you fellas would be way over here. Now you, now you can see it, right? It's pretty close. Okay, so so it changes with the shot. That means if I had a mirror here, right here, what you would generally see is an angle that you're going to find the happy medium to see that image over here through the mirror. It's a reflection of this angle versus this angle. So if, I, if that was true from this angle being straight on from the cue ball to this angle, that means the object ball being here, you'll be able to see that the distance from this ball to here will be the same to this mirror. So what you do is that if you're trying to hit this object ball, you take the distance from here to here, pull it back to here, look at the cue ball, and this is where you want to hit. Go ahead, shoot at my finger. Medium, medium pop. Ah, he hit it. Okay. This time, this distance. This is a little harder, but still, he hit it right here. So I took the same distance here. Now I look back at the cue ball. This is where he wants to aim. Oh, so you're using the left, right spin. You want to hit vertically middle, pop. Hit it very high. Now still. So oh. real close. Okay. So if, if you're over here okay. and you're trying to hit this one, you want to get over there. So you double the distance from here to here, and this is where you want to aim. Right here. Oh, you hit it hard. Let me, let me give you an example. Let's assume that this is where the object ball is. Uh, here's the object ball. Let me borrow this chair. I don't 
here, if you use this ball here, this ball here, this ball here. Aim at that nine ball. Just aim straight at the nine ball. And medium speed, not hard. Okay, try again. Watch the pros. 
go on ESPN and watch the pros. Think about how they're playing. If they play nine ball, think about their game. Okay, what would you do? You know, you say, well, I don't know. So then they do something. Oh, the next time they put. Oh, I remember from the last time. This is what they'll do. They do something completely different. It all depends on every shot. They're not the same. There's billions of different shots. If you lay it down and say, okay, this is the same shot. Next time you come over here, this is the same shot. No, oh, no. It's different. Every little bit changes. Earlier when we were doing a shot, I tried to do this one here. Come around and follow around here to this table. But if I made a difference in terms of the, of the angle of it, there made a lot of difference in what I could do uh, with, a, with a shot to come over here. I came short being over here. I came way over here only. But when I extended this out a little bit, just that much, it made a difference to be come to here rather than here. So every shot, I knew that I would come short. Knowing what you can do, and don't think that you can be able to do it. A lot of times I play games, and I can't do the things that I want to do, so I play it safe. Yeah, so those are things that you can learn. So if it was uh, frozen on the rail, I think you asked this question before. You got stuck there. If it was like stuck against, stuck against the rail. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's assume that, that aren't doing. Okay. Let's assume that this ball is stuck right on the rail. I'm going to set it right here in the center of that D. Now, where am I going to make the cue ball go? Let's assume that I want to come over here. Okay, there's a couple ways I can do this. Um, I'm, I'm stuck with it here, right? Okay, so I am going to put spin on it enough that it will come around this way, come around over here. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to extend the shot here. And now I'm going to use the left spin. Now so you can hit one, the rail first? I hit the ball first. There's a difference. I'm glad you asked that. Did I hit the rail first? No, I did hit the rail first. Because if I hit the rail first, the cue ball would come up here this way. If I hit the ball first, the cue ball is way, way down here somewhere. This is what happens if I hit the rail first. Now let me show you. I'm going to use the same spin. There's a difference. But I use the same I was just curious about making the shot in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, same shot, right? Now this time I'm going to use right spin, not the left. But I'm also going to hit the ball first so it comes back this way. <laughs> the right spin makes that makes it harder to make the ball in the first place, doesn't it? Wouldn't left spin make it? One yes, spin you have to hit a perfect on the ball. And how, how, how perfect did I have to hit it? I did it very well, you know, really perfect. But if you put left spin, you can hit it a little less perfect. Yes. All right. Okay. So I see a couple of smiles on faces. Wow. I'm going to do that. <laughs> Come in here and practice. That's what you can do. You can be one of the pros eventually. Especially you. <laughs> okay. Well, I think, uh, God, I, I, I'm really happy that uh, all of you stuck around for this and you know, see that you want to learn. You, you've got a table here that's going to be a great experience to be able to practice. Like you can practice all you want. Forget about work. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I hope I uh, influenced you enough to be able to see that uh, there's a lot of probabilities in terms of what you can do with the ball now. You kind of have a physical understanding of your mechanics. Like I say, it's stick to your mechanics. Once you get past a couple of years, you'll see that, okay, um, I, I need to learn something else. Well, go to an instructor. Go to a friend that knows what he's doing. Go to tournaments. Go, go watch the pros play. Figure out what they're doing with their game. Whether they're using top, bottom, middle, left, right, spin. Just see what happens. Just see, it. see it really improve your game. You'll learn a lot. Thank you.
Thank you very much. And thank you.